playing this music affords us an experience that I think many other people don't get in other areas of functioning in life. Uh, playing this music uh, sort of compels us to be in the moment. Well, to me, music is about feeling and emotions. And above all, uh, music is about beauty. That's what I'm after at all times, uh, it's beauty. Uh, playing mu music for people is the most sublime experience. So, so music is, 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 is the most subtle form of expression. And um, it's no joke when they say it's the universal language. It speaks to everyone. Well, I, I'm searching for the most beautiful melody that I can find, and the most beautiful harmony, and the most dancing rhythm. You know. So, as I said, you know, it's beauty. We are in the bandstand and that something happens when we know we have uh, performed in a way that we don't usually perform. Where we realize we weren't even there. It wasn't really about us. Playing the piano seems to, for me, you know, cover that, that part of expressing myself when words, when I can't find the right words. And I don't know if I ever could find the words to, to express you know, what I'd like to express, all the deep emotions and feelings that are there, to express the life and the truth uh, uh, about life. It's a life to live, you know, learn to love it, you know, don't do it if you don't love it, you know, that's the most important thing. Um, and as a musician, I would say the most important thing is to learn how to listen. Although many of the musicians I've played with over the years, uh, many of them have left the planet, um, I feel a certain, uh, but I feel like, uh, as the old church songs say, I feel like I have a charge to keep. You know, um, guys like Woody Shaw, 
Art Blakey, Johnny Griffin, and Tony Williams, who died for this music, uh, put an investment in me. They invested their time and their interest and their love in me. And that's why um, being a jazz messenger has this, that, that title has a special significance to me at this time. I feel like that I have a charge to keep it, to carry that message on. I'm not even sure that I even deserve to be there when I look at the kind of giants they were. experience that we've experienced a few or many times somewhere along the way if we can get in that zone so to speak and it's a rare experience experience so we're, we're slaves to that experience you know and, and the search for it and we're not always there most of us that when it happens we're driven to try to find that experience again and that's such a profound experience, you know. How are you feeling? What do you have to say on your birthday for this playing with Steve again, as you so often do? Yeah, well, it's nice to be with him. And uh, it's nice to be around. So this, this set here, this is two days that you're celebrating your birthdays together? That's correct. And you always talk about uh, listening, and the audience was really listening. Yes, they and were. So how important is listening, not only for the audience, but for the musician? Oh, especially for the musician. You've really seen the connection between you and Steve. Uh -huh. You know, and how all the musicians are listening to each other and playing off each other. Is that the key thing to what makes you guys sound so good? Well, that's part of it. Thank you so much, Mr. Miller. And happy birthday. Thank you. your good friend. Oh man, I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't know what I'd do without him.
Mr. Miller developed his voice in the 1970s, combining the bright precision of bebop as exemplified by Bud Powell and Oscar Peterson, with the clattering intrigue of modal jazz, especially as defined by McCoy Tyner. His balanced but assertive style was a model of fluency, lucidity, and bounce, and it influenced more than a generation of younger pianists. He was a widely respected band leader, working with a trio or a, with a group he called Wingspan, after the title of his second album. The blend of alto, saxophone, and vibraphone on that 1987 album appealed enough to Mr. Miller that he revived it in 2002 on the sequel. Working in both cases with the vibraphonist Steve Nelson, among Mr. Miller's releases in the past decade were an impeccable solo piano album and four live albums featuring his dynamic trio. Well, do you have any final words as just to say to your fans or up and coming musicians? Well, uh, I wish the best to my fans, the best in health, and the best in music, and the best in life. I don't know what I'd do without it. As I said, you know, it's beauty.